What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another transfer daily video for you guys today. It is transfer deadline day or it's the first transfer deadline day. I know there's two. There's one in a couple weeks for domestic transfers as well that we are going to keep a look at as well. And at least, at the very least, it means I can put out some more transfer content throughout the international break. Because now we know that there are still going to be more transfers. There'll be potentially more loans going in and out of Chelsea as the weeks progress. As we're still trying to get rid of some outgoings in the next coming week so we're going to discuss a couple of them in this video we're also going to discuss Thomas Party and Declan Rice there was little rumors of an interest in Thomas Party which have now died down and we're going to discuss the reasons why for that in this video as well but before we start this video if you guys haven't done so already please smash that like button press the subscribe button and hit the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever we release any new content on this channel now we're going to start off with the Declan Rice news well I say news, not too much development on the Declan Rice source things, but it's more or less development on a potential number two replacement that we could have had for him. And we know Chelsea have been linked with Declan Rice for most of 2020. We know Declan Rice is down for the move to Chelsea. Chelsea also want him as well. We know this has been a long running saga for most of the year. But the main issue has been West Ham. West Ham stayed up at the end of last season, which means they had the ability to hold on to Declan Rice for another year and lure him back with Premier League football. They also have a four-year deal. They also have a four-year contract to Declan Rice in place, and also due to his importance in the team, it was going to be hard for us to try and lure him back to Chelsea. Anyways, we know that there is the potential for this transfer to happen, but it's probably not going to happen this window. I feel like we've had so many other priorities throughout the window in trying to get in attackers, in trying to get a centre back and a goalkeeper as well. DM was the last was the last place on our list and it has come a little too little too late with the season starting for West Ham as well with West Ham struggling to bring in other assets and their form actually improving as well anyway they're not going to get rid of Declan Rice Declan Rice is their best player by a mile if they have any hopes of staying up in the Premier League again for another season they need Declan Rice in order to do it. and it's not to say this deal isn't going to happen it's just probably not going to happen this year and Chelsea were potentially looking at other options towards the end of the window, cl coming closer towards deadline day. They were trying to look at other options at DM to try and fill in that gap because realistically, it is the only hole in our midfield. And Thomas Partey's name did come out as one of the potential transfers that Chelsea could be looking at. We know the situation with Arsenal. Arsenal have been linked with him throughout the whole summer as well. It only looks like it's finally going to be going through now. And Chelsea were interested in trying to usurp that deal and I'm low-key hoping we can still do it. I'm hoping I can post another video at the end of today saying we've done it again. We've taken another player from a rival. Thomas Partey is a Chelsea player, but I doubt it. I don't think it's happening either. And look, when you look at it from the outside then you're thinking... Why haven't we made this move for Thomas Party? I mean, when you look at it, he fits our only big hole in midfield. He's versatile with the ability to play as a lone DM as well as a box-to-box -box midfielder. He's around half the price of Declan Rice at £45 million and also means that we can take a big signing away from a London rival, which gives the double effect of us improving our team and also holding Arsenal back as well. But Lampard has been adamant that Declan Rice is the DM that he's wanted. And if you've taken a look at the way we've gone through our transfers throughout the whole, su the whole summer compared to previous summers, it's not been like with other managers where we they say they want this number one target and we go and get a B-Tech version of him or the third quality version of him and then it just ends up not working. We've gone after our number one targets, we've pursued them relentlessly and we've eventually got our man, especially for the price tag that we've wanted as well. So I think the pattern is keeping the same with Declan Rice. Lampard still wants him at the club. I don't think he's going to come in the summer, but I think Frank Lampard is going to wait the year for him, which is annoying in a sense, because I'll be real, I do still want Thomas Partey, and I do think we just need a, a DM in general. That's the only hole that we have left in our midfield. You've got every other type of midfielder in our squad, except for a lone DM that will sit behind the defenders and actually protect that back line. We've already spoken about Kante and Kovacic and I've said that they can play that position but they are ball progressors by nature, they're more box-to-box -box midfielders and they're going to roam a bit further forward and leave that defence a little bit more exposed than you'd want them to be. So I, so I would understand I was going in for Thomas Partey, especially for the fact that it is half the price of Declan Rice. But... I'm not going to complain in sticking to what the manager wants. I think with us being this persistent on getting Declan Rice, no matter how long that we have to wait, 
it's shown a reliance on the manager's instructions that we haven't seen in previous years. Like, like I've already said we're getting C-Tech versions of actual signings that we wanted. If you remember the Conte years where they wanted Alexandro and we end up getting an Emerson or they wanted Lukaku and we end up bringing in Morata or they wanted Nangalan and we end up bringing in Bakayoko and barely any of the transfers ever worked out for us because they were just B-Tech versions of the transfers that we actually wanted. If Frank Lampard is that insistent that he wants Declan Rice as the midfielder, as the defensive midfielder for this club, I'm happy waiting for another year. I'm not going to sit here and complain too much about the transfer window. It has been an amazing transfer window and it's been such a breath of fresh air after the last couple years of just doing actually absolutely nothing and the last transfer window of doing literally nothing because we were in a transfer ban. This has been an amazing transfer window. Even in the case of, okay, we don't have a natural DM at the club. We still have Kante that can play that role. We still have Kovacic that can play that role as well. You could have Jorginho next to either of them and he'll be the one that sits deep. Yes, he lacks the athletic athleticism but at least be someone to put in that position as well billy gilmore when he comes back from injury could play that number six role in the 4-3-3-2 um if we're to call, talking about other players that could play in dm i know reese james has had a couple minutes in that role i can't say too much about it but if we ever have injuries and we need to rotate we can put reese james in dm as well hell Bakayoko maybe is depth and I, I can't even believe I'm calling for Bakayoko to get more minutes but with the way, with how cramped the fixture pile up is going to be fuck it you never know I've seen crazier things he might actually have a good match for us but just keep him as like last minute depth if we're not going to get Declan Rice or anything but not bringing in Declan Rice leaving Thomas Party to go to Arsenal it's not the end of the world. It's annoying seeing Arsenal get a good DM because it is kind of exactly what they wanted. But they still lack a lot of creativity in that midfield and their club's dead anyway. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, we'll go through the rest of the transfer news that could potentially be happening at deadline day. It's mostly outgoings and I can't lie to you guys. This is going to be depressing news from here on out. So I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but just don't shoot the messenger. It just is what it is. First player we're going to talk about, Emerson. Juve, I've been interested in signing Emerson as well. We know Inter Milan were interested in signing Emerson throughout the summer, but because of Chelsea's 25 million valuation of the left back, they've cancelled the deals, they stopped the negotiations, and they went for, uh, who was it, Alexander Kolarov from Roma instead. And Juve were interested in signing Emerson as well. I think they were trying to get rid of the Siglio first. And like we said, Chelsea have been trying to find a club to get rid of him to anyway. And it's been the same news for Marcus Alonso as well. Ever since Ben Chilwell's joined, it's just whoever we can get rid of first and that's it. But Juventus have also been put off by the 25 million valuation fee. And because of that, this deal is also looking off the table as well. And as things stand... Emerson is going to be a Chelsea player by the end of this transfer window. Maybe an English club will come for him in the secondary domestic window when we can loan him out somewhere else. I know West Ham are interested in him. I'm sure there'll be another club in England that could do with a left back. He's, he's I was going to say he's our third choice left back, but after the Alonso and West Brom news, it could be either of the two. I'd be real, I don't care whichever one we get rid of. I've said plenty of times on this on this channel that they're both bums, they're both not the left backs that we need, and they're both not Chelsea quality. Get rid of them both ASAP, but one thing we need to do is the valuation fee. I've already said with this transfer window and with all those situations that have gone on because of the pandemic this year, no club can afford these sorts of valuation fees, especially when we're putting 25 million on Emerson, a guy who could be our third choice left back if we want to be real about it. Or maybe they're joint third, I don't know, because neither of them are joint first. But we need to lower this valuation if we are going to be serious about getting him. I think Juve, they said the price tag was too big even for a loan deal, which makes me question how much we were making them pay for the loan deal anyway because we know we sent Ross Barkley to Villa for 11 million he's had a banging game against Liverpool yesterday but that was already 4 million off the actual transfer fee that we had for him so I wouldn't be surprised if it was like a 20 million pound loan deal and if that's the case yeah fair play I don't blame them for ignoring it Victor Moses and Marcus Alonso both were wanted by Inter Milan Antonio Conte was, I think, more after Victor Moses than Marcus Alonso. But again, same issue with Juventus as well. The valuation fee has been too high for both players and Inter Milan can't afford them. So Inter Milan are looking for other options as well. They brought in another right back as well. I can't tell you the name off the top of my head, but they brought in another right back, which means they are no longer in interested in Victor Moses. Maybe they'll go in for Marcus Alonso. Again, I don't know, but I don't think it's going to happen. It's too late in the window now. 
Um, Malang Saar, the last piece of news. He's also, he is going on loan to Porto. They're in talks about a loan deal. I do think this one's just going to go through. And him him working together with Pepe in a back line for the whole season will be good for him. But that's all I can really say too much when it comes to Saar. Because we know he was coming in and then going instantly straight out on loan. We know he's still too raw of a defender to put straight into the first team. He needs to go out to another club and get that experience. And have a little less pressure on him than he had at his previous club as well. So it, it's the best deal for both parties. I hope he has a good year on loan and comes back an even stronger defender um actually last piece of news we're going to talk about Antonio Rudiger because I didn't speak about him in yesterday's video either Spurs are interested in him PSG are interested Juventus AC Milan Roma and Inter Milan want Rudiger right now I think it's only going to be Spurs and Roma that, that he's genuinely going to be going to Roma was his former club so I could see him going back for another year it's not really too far-fetched for me Tottenham as well because Rudiger does want to stay in London. He's settled here. He's happy in the city. He doesn't really want to move out. That's why I think if he goes to any other club, it will be to Roma because it's another country that he's used to. He's been in Italy before. He's been in Rome too. So I could see this sort of deal happening. I think Rudiger... If Rudiger isn't gone by today, he's going to Spurs and that will just be it and done. But I'm, I am leaning more towards Roma. They're trying to get Chris Smalling in from Manchester United, but they're probably holding on to him now because they need all the centre-backs that, that they can get after being smoked by Spurs. But yeah, Rudiger looks to be going on loan. I hope it's not to Spurs because I just don't want to see him in the Spurs, Spurs shirt. But if he plays the same way he's done over the last year, Spurs can have him and start him every match because it'll cost them points as well. But yeah, this is the end of the Transfer Daily video for you guys today. I might do a video at deadline day depending on what's actually happened around the club. But I don't know if much is actually going to occur. But yeah, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Up the Chelsea.